Hello, good day, and welcome back. So let's wrap up chapter four. And so basically what we saw in chapter four is that the different languages provide different sets of tools or language features to help you manage a large application. Basically, how do you break up a big piece of code so that it's easy to manage? Whether you're the only person working on that piece of code and you can manage the different, different abstractions that you have in the application and layers, or whether it's to break it up so that you can work collaboratively with a team and colleagues, okay? So the next thing is now that you've broken up your application, can, how can that code be reused? And that's where we saw things like being able to put it in some kind of binary form for later inclusion. So in Go, for example, you saw that how even though you put stuff in directory and you call them, you say this is in a package, it automatically get compiled, installed, and then you can re-import it. And in Java, we combine it to that class file and then include it in a jar and then we can reuse it. And then the final thing, which is sort of why I wanted to sort of talk about this anyway, is to try and understand as you go through features in a language, which feature is sort of core to the language or which and which feature is like in a standard library for the language versus a feature that's provided by the community. And for this to make sense, um, let's sort of step back a look and say that though every language starts off with specification. Um, you may not have read the language specification for every language you know, and I certainly haven't read every language specification. But generally, I try to read the language specification, at least part of it for most languages that, I'm, that I really like, just to get that sort of insight and thinking behind why they put in certain features or what's the best way to use a certain feature of the language. And so on the left, when you look at the language specification, uh, once the authors of the language come up with whatever the language specification is, um, they might decide that certain features go in as core part of the language, and then some goes in as standard library. And the reason why is no language would come without some set of reusable piece of code. But in this case, the language writers are giving you pieces of code that they know that all you would want to reuse, whether it's for manipulating file or binary data or images or whatever, depending on what the intent of that language is, right? Um, what space they're trying to fill. And so take Go as an example. String and bool are primitive types in that language. The keywords, they, they, when they were designing the language, they said, we're going to have strings, we're going to have bull, and those are going to be keywords that people cannot use for anything else. Now, take C++. C++ has a standard template library. There's the name right there in it, standard. So it's a library that if you get any distribution of C++, it's going to also have the standard template library. Whether you want to use it or not is up to you, but the standard template library is there because it also goes through the standard process for the C++ language. But guess what? Strings are in the standard template library. String is not a keyword in C++. It's something that's added by the standard template library, but that's still part of the language. You could think of a language specification. But let's just say for now, C++ has the standard template library, and that's where the string is defined. So it's not defined in the core of the language, but we're still going to consider it part of C++. So if somebody asks you, does C++ has the concept of a string, even though it's not part of the core language, but the fact because it's included in the standard library that comes with any C++ implementation, we're going to say it how it's part of the language and, you know, covered by the specification of the language. Not the intent, original author of the language, but later on by the community that standardized that language, they included string. Just like they included threads was one of the things that was added in like C++ 11, I think, or something like that, right? So earlier C++ did not have the idea of a thread in the language as a standard thing, but then in the standard library, they included thread. Okay, so as a language age, you know, certain things that might be in a community library, like I said, going to make it into the language, not maybe in the core, but in one of the standard library. And then there are things that are in libraries that are used by people who use the language extensively, but um, it comes from the community. So if you think of Python, for example, one of the things that people use Python for is manipulating data and scientific stuff, right? Uh, machine learning, that sort of thing. And so you have the scikit-learn library, and PyData and, you know, the Panda library. And so those are so well known in the Python community that if you are going to be doing anything data wise in Python, that's the library that pretty much anyone is going to point you to. Now, are they auto machine learning and the big data library and graphics and all this other library? Sure. A number manipulation library. Yes. But, uh, by far, Panda library is like the one library that pretty much everybody else in the community uses. And so you can look at Scala and there's the ACA library for doing like actors and all this other thing. And so again, that's another library that's created by the community, but it's been so popular and well received by people who use the language that while it's not part of the standard of the language, but it's so closely tied 
um, it extends the language and gives it certain capabilities. It's a little bit hard to talk about C because C has no concept of like string, right? But there's no similar library that always goes along with C that people um, really um, feel that they must have. Um, but then there are libraries that are standard library with C that you do get and it gives you things like complex or math and so on. But those weren't part of the C language really. But I would still include them with being part of the C language because they're, like I said, standard library and any implementation of C, you'd expect to have like math that age and string that age. So um, in that sense, um, we consider it totally part of, um, of C. Mm -hmm. um, there are a few more examples in, with the languages um, that I can talk about, but I'm not gonna make this video too long. Um, again, this is just to wrap up this chapter. Um, in the next chapter, we're going to start looking at more features of languages, arrays, complex numbers, all these other sort of things, strings, maps, and so on, classes, whatever. And then we will say, well, okay, for this language, it's either baked in, or it comes in a standard library, or it's provided by the community. And so that's the reason for sort of covering this, sort of trying to get an understanding of where this idea of where a feature for a library might sit. Okay, so that's it. Um, follow me on Twitter. It's Traversity1, Instagram's Traversity. And see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.